Hi, we're hiding behind the plant. I'm going to do what Dave Scott normally does. He hides behind the plant and he goes like this. <laughs> Hello. Good morning. So there we go. Good morning to you. Good morning. How are you? So, okay, what we're talking about here is these are drought resistant plants. Drought tolerant. Drought tolerant. And edible. And edible plants. Right. So uh, obviously the reason we're talking about this is because of the drought. Exactly right. And let me ask you this. Uh, where are you from? I'm from... Your, your business here. Oh, Groundwork San Diego Choyas Creek. We are the watershed organization for Choyas Creek, which runs from Lemon Grove La Mesa down to San Diego Bay. Yes, it does. And obviously we're concerned about saving water. Very much so. And yeah. we're very concerned about, about getting our watershed communities involved in the conservation and climate action movement. There you go. Wow, that was it's a It's going to take all of us. It is. It, it's going to take a village. All of us. It's going to take everyone. Right. All right. So what you want to do is show people basically plants they can put in their yards. Absolutely. That won't take a lot of water, but they will be beautiful and they'll give you that great cover. Absolutely. How about it? Let's start over here. Okay. What we have here is a desert willow. This is a beautiful tree, drought tolerant tree that will go grow 8 to 12 feet tall. Wow. Provides a wonderful urban canopy, shade, uh, sequesters carbon, and has the added benefit of attracting all kinds of pollinators, including hummingbirds. Oh, so and that's why a, you have the little hummingbird. So it's a really beautiful tree. That's why you have the little hummingbird. That's so right. this thing will get up to be 8 feet oh, high. Oh, even taller, 12 feet. And 12 feet. And mm -hmm. the, the, the stalk here will get to be like what? As big as this pot, probably. That's about right. Yeah. Wow. And no so maintenance, impressive. very little wa to no water. Very Absolutely little to no water. Easy to grow. Deep roots? Deep roots. Deep uh, no, roots. shallow roots. Shallow roots. Shallow roots. Okay. All easy right. Easy to grow. All right. So what's the name of this again? Desert Willow. The Desert Willow. Yeah. All right. What's this baby? This is a Cleveland Sage. If you rub your yeah, fingers I was say, on it, it smells really it's good. very, very fragrant. Uh -huh. Again, it attracts pollinators and these beautiful blue flowers that come out. It's a kind of got an interesting history. It's so fragrant that it was used by the Kumia to cover up the human scent when they were hunting. So they would rub their bodies in it when they would go out to hunt. It's very strong and beautifully scented. Brilliant. You've given me yep. a new idea for my next camping trip. Okay. <laughs> Keep the bears away. Keep the whatever away. Yeah, just, just rub myself. With the, okay. Anyway, so <laughs> what do we have here? This is a penstamen, and again, a beautiful uh, plant attracting pollinators, uh, drought tolerant. One of the things we're doing in our uh, conservation upgrades to our homes is putting in gray water and rain barrel systems to feed these plants the little bit of water they do need. Where's gray water? Gray water is a laundry to landscape now permitted in San Diego and so we convert the uh, water that flows out of the washing machine yeah. into a system that goes into the yards and feeds these plants with water. Kind of brilliant. It's very smart and very safe. It and is. And what about the detergent though? You have to you use have to have a, a non-toxic. Right. Widely available. Easy to do but the yeah. savings for families is you know very very significant for them on an annual basis well I mean think about it think about how much water goes through our homes and just into the back into the water system exactly we, if we could just sort of channel that to you're, a different pipe you're exactly right and it takes energy in our water systems to process all of this water yeah so why not use it for beneficial purposes in our yards it makes perfectly good sense good. doesn't it this yeah. is my favorite plant this is a mi milkweed and yeah. it is the host plant to the monarch butterfly. You might know that President Obama has a monarch highway project in Minnesota to put 3,500 miles of milkweed so that we can begin to restore the health and vitality of this critical species. So I we did not love know Obama plant. had a milkweed highway on milkweed the on the way. Hi mo monarch highway. The monarch highway. Yep. And it's, and it's because of the milkweed. It is. And these are don't require a lot of water. Nope, drought tolerant. The interesting thing here is that the monarch lays its eggs. The birds do not uh, like this plant, and so the eggs are safe, caterpillars are safe, and then they go in uh, to their chrysalis. And so you'd find them like under the leaves here. Exactly. Would, and the most beautiful yeah. caterpillars you've ever seen. Oh, that is wonderful. The cycle of life, if you yeah. will. And of course, the old favorite prickly pear. How do you know the prickly pear? I know me cactus. Okay. I know some cactus, woman. <laughs> the I've been out in the pear. desert. I had to survive on prickly pear for a month. Did you actually eat? No, I no, didn't, okay. but you can eat them. You can. It yeah. has a beautiful fruit that you can eat. It's also the host plant to the cactus wren. So that is a species of concern in California, and so it's a really important plant. Do they make their homes in the cactus? Uh, the they wren? use this for food source, and then there's a sister cactus called the choyas cactus, yeah, the choyas. and that's where they create their nest. So so 
they use both. Very nice. And finally, you say, that, well, it's an edible. This is an edible. This is a fig tree. And so when we're doing our conservation upgrades in our homes, and our students, by the way, are propagating these plants at the Earth Lab, which is the Groundwork Outdoor Science Center. So they propagate the plants and trees, and then they take them into their backyards, and they plant them. They're also helping us learn the technology to install the gray water system. So they're getting an awful lot out of this, including really interesting high-value conservation jobs. These are kids doing this? Kids, our kids. All so our next the generation choice. should be okay. Absolutely. They won't be water wasters. No, they won't. Yeah. And they'll understand how to convert their own homes uh, to, for climate action. Well, you know, I got to tell you, if anybody had a house and they had all these plants around here, it would be so plush and beautiful, yet you'd be using how much less water? Oh, like say than having rose bushes and things of like gallons that. Gallons of water will be saved. The yeah. other thing is that these plants control erosion. When it rains, it stops water from running off and carrying toxins to the creek and the bay. Yeah. And these don't require fertilizers or pesticides or any of those things that pollute our water in our bay. Very good. So if anyone wants more information, how do they get a hold of they, you? Our website is www.groundworksandiego.org, so they can call us and we do workshops. We'd be happy to help. They can also call uh, California Native Plant Society, Master Gardeners, but we would love to help anybody who's interested. All right. Well, this is great stuff and so timely and so important. And thank you for knowing the cactus. That's yeah, you kind got of a it. shock. Well, I spent a little time in Arizona. <laughs> okay. That's the truth. We're going to have you come out and eat some of these fruits. Okay. Okay. Yeah, the little pears that grow on there. Yep. Absolutely. And are these figs edible now? Not quite. Not quite. No, these, but they're kind of soft. Yeah, but they're not quite ready. They're not quite I'll ready. I'll call you when they're ready and you yeah. come over and we'll make you something good. You do that. You know, we should come out to your lab and, and oh, check that out. Oh, we would love to have you come out. It's four acres. There are hundred, hundreds of kids there all summer. Well, we're Learn. doing it. Come out. Done deal. Okay. We're coming out. We're going to visit you. Thank you. Thanks for coming in. Okay. All right. We're going to take a little break here. I'm going to get back behind this tree like Dave Scott. <laughs> like Dave. Good morning, San Diego.